This is what they want to do, get drunk, man. They want to get drunk, possibly get hit in the face by other women. They tried to hit on them, never really works. You know, honestly, everything just goes bad here. I saw a dude last time, he, he almost... You know what? It's not even important. It's like, sir, what are you talking about? So we're going to get trained. Social media guy <laughs> with really good opinions on pizza, but he is the founder and owner of Barstool Sports, a company oh. he sold for 551 million in 2023, then 4 months later bought the entire company back for just $1. React to kids visit prison? What? As he has been accused of just about I bet. every I bet. thing you can imagine. Now Dave put himself in these situations with his own words or actions. Frat boy jokes like if you're a size 6 and you're wearing skinny jeans, you kind of deserved to be raped, didn't help him when one of his rendezvous with a 19 year old turned into what? a very serious allegation and whenever a new controversy comes up he what? doesn't run to a pr team he brought i thought this was about food what when when it <laughs> when did it <laughs> It just took a turn out of nowhere. It's been 30 seconds. Podcast his responses raw and unfiltered, never apologizing because he doesn't think he has done anything wrong. His bold approach to social media and business has earned him millions of diehard fans around the world, supporting him through every accusation, making Dave grow bigger and stronger. His opposers see him as some sort of pizza-eating, gambling supervillain, wondering when what? all of this will reach a tipping point. After graduating from Swampscott High School in Massachusetts, Swamp Scott. pursued a degree in education at the University of Michigan, where he developed his love of partying, gambling, and pizza. Three things that meant so much to him. Pizza is so fire. I could eat it. a in whole box right now. The very first issue of the Barstool <laughs> yes. newspaper hit the streets of Boston. The only newspaper in Boston written by the common man for the common man. The people at Barstool Sports are a bunch of average Joes who, like most guys, love sports, gambling, golfing, and chasing short skirts. Dave drove around in his Astro van, dropping the paper off at newsstands, bars, and subway stations, hoping people would read his work. At the time, Dave didn't really know what he wanted to do or how he could make money from it, but he was fixated on building a community of other guys just like him. Unfortunately, from the very beginning, Dave had a difficult time managing his money. He was working some corporate sales job, making around $100,000 per year, but spending it all and then some. In 2004, he owed $59,000 to credit card companies and $18,000 to his father. On top of that, Damn. he lost $30,000 gambling, which Yo, led to what is he doing? bankruptcy. Barstool had a tough time taking off since nobody really wanted to read about a Sunday afternoon with the guys watching football. Dave knew he needed something more exciting to attract readers, so he started hiring professional models and paying for bro. erotic photo Come shoots on, to last on the front page. Dave's readers increased exponentially due to the Miss Barstool competition, which it's always going to do it. It's always women. It's always going to work. You see why OnlyFans is working. Featured girls answering questions like, do you want guys to stare at you when you wear a bikini to the beach? And would you ever hook up with a married man? The winner of each week's competition would get chosen at the Miss Barstool huh? Sports Party, Ooh? which was the huh? way of luring guys into small bar parties that huh? you would throw to build the Barstool brand. This is what guys want to do. They just want to sit around all day, kind of get drink a lot. You know? this, is what, this is what they want to do. Get drunk, man. They want to get drunk, possibly get hit in the face by other women. They tried to hit on them, never really works. You know, honestly, everything just goes bad here. I saw a dude last time, he, he almost, you know what, it's not even important. It's like, sir, what are you talking about? Get a little bit banged up and lose some money on basketball. So that's what the common guy likes doing. That's, that's not what I like doing, sir. I'm not the common guy, am I? That's what we do. 
Portnoy knew exactly who his target market was, pick-me girls and guys who peaked in high school. Once he launched the Barstool <laughs> blog online, he was able to it's a crazy audience. A nationwide audience. He knew that Pick-me girls and crazy didn't actually want to talk about sports. ESPN was for and guys who peaked in high school. I'm current. strategy. Barstool delved into the personal lives of athletes and unapologetically trashed their performances. They also doubled down on content like Guess That Ass, Local Smoke Show of the Day, and Smoke Smash, which was basically a smash or pass style voting game but for northeastern college girls. Barstool Sports ironically got more popular and known for introducing you to good looking girls in your area than for talking about sports. With this digital transformation, Portnoy became more of a celebrity, dubbed El Presidente or Pre for short. Some of Barstool's writers became celebrities in the community too. KFC and K Marco were two of the most prominent, known to not hold back on their takes. You're a pussy, Antonio Holmes. A coward. A pathetic excuse for a professional athlete. Just downright despicable. But there was another Barstool legend you might recognize. Jenna Marbles. Jenna wrote know. and made content with Barstool before she started her Jenna YouTube Marbles. Channel. Barstool fans loved that Jenna yeah. understood what guys liked. She was funny. And Jenna Marbles. She posted scantily clad photos of herself on the site. Jenna was no. also a cheat code for content. Sports fans were baffled that a girl wanted to talk to them. Would you rather have a girl from the top of sports or would you rather <laughs> Jenna, as well as other girls, served as promoters for the Barstool parties, which led to hundreds, sometimes thousands of fans showing up for the festivities. Iconic catchphrases like Viva La Stool and Stoola Palooza ran rampant throughout colleges in the early 2010s. Frat That's kids crazy. would proudly hang their Barstool flags. Eager to financially capitalize on the loyalty of these students, Portnoy launched the Stoola Palooza tour with Sammy Adams, six shows in northeastern colleges in which he was expecting to have a couple hundred attendees. Then the School started offering the large auditoriums, and at the blink of an eye, they were selling thousands of tickets. They followed the series with the Barstool Blackout, Dang. a neon and blacklight themed live concert series across the eastern United States that featured the likes of Sammy Adams, Mac Miller, Mike Posner, as well oh, as Oh, they was lit tickets. lit. They built a reputation for being the craziest college party promoters in the country, which would only end badly. In April of 2012, 24 young people who attended a blackout party in Montclair, New Jersey, were hospitalized for severe intoxication. A month before that, a Barstool blackout show was abruptly canceled, with arrests made and over 300 counterfeit ID cards being seized. To make things worse, they were accused of promoting culture. This is a difficult thing to prove. What that is until people what? read Dave's personal what? blog in 2010, what? where he wrote, "Even though I never condone, rape, if you're a size six and you're wearing skinny jeans, you kind of deserve to." be raped, right? The 33-year-old also said Yo. I'm going to post more as I can on, on my TikToks. Is, yeah. And thank you. You don't, you don't have to, by the way. You don't have to. Don't feel like you have to just because you watch. You can... Bro, you watching is is enough. You don't you don't have to uh, promote it. It's cool. Said the following: We don't condone rape of any kind at our blackout parties. However, if a chick passes out, that's a gray area. Now, most people are quick to say that David. What? Oh well, I appreciate it, yo. Thank you. It's a gray area. What? I was just joking. And again, Dave knows his target audience. This type of joke crushes around his buddies in the bar. On an interview with Inside Edition, Dave doubled down on his comments. You posted the following on your site. I never condone rape, but if you're a size six and you're wearing skinny jeans, you kind of deserve to be raped. Correct. I stand by that. I think it's a funny joke. You think it's funny? No, I didn't say that. I think it's a funny joke. Do you understand how offensive that is? No, I obviously don't. Others argued that these jokes... <laughs> no, I obviously don't get it. So, can you explain? She's like... She, she, get him out of here. ...as well as the over-fetishization and objectification of women throughout the barstool culture promotes men assaulting, or at least harassing women. In August of 2011, Portnoy faced further backlash after posting explicit images featuring the two-year-old son of legendary quarterback Tom Brady. The what? The was a leaked paparazzi image of Tom's family at the beach and his baby boy was naked. The article was posted to the Barstool Sports page titled, Check out the howitzer on Brady's kid. In case you're curious, a howitzer 
is basically a military-grade cannon. The photos also accompanied a short article glamorizing and psychoanalyzing the child's genitalia, but Dave said his comments were not sexual. David, thanks for being with us. I want to No, you're fucking weird. You're weird. You're weird. When I make the video, I'm a insert the Soluminati you're weird meme. Yes. I'm telling future me to do it so he knows. You're weird. Yes, he should be in prison. You're weird. What? That's a two-year-old child. What is wrong with you? What am I watching? I ask you first of all, because I've got people saying that you're out of line, not only with the picture of the two-year-old boy, but the comments about the boy's private parts. You're on the air. What do you say? Yeah, I, I don't see it that way at all. I, I don't think it's out of line at all or else I wouldn't have posted it. How then would you describe how you describe the little boy's private parts? Uh, I said he had a big, uh, a big howitzer. Despite all the backlash, Dave did not think he did anything wrong, nor did he want to delete the post. I had no intentions of taking it down until the visit from the cops. I met with them, they asked me to take it down in the best interest of everybody involved. I told them I'd call them back in an hour with my decision and then took it down. I basically didn't want to get into a pissing contest with the cops or the state. There's no such thing as bad publicity they say. Dave is a true testament to that. Dave's controversies only continue to benefit him and the Barstool brand, attracting more guys who loved raunchy humor, gambling, and sports. He also attracted more haters, who formed an alliance called Knockout Barstool, a group created in opposition of the blog's use of jokes and light attitude towards sexual assault. Knockout Barstool rallied and protested one of their blackout events at Northwestern right. University. Right now, we're, we're driving over to a mass protest about me. Perpetuating culture. Victim blaming. Sexism. Misogyny. Homophobia. Racism. Racism. protest moved outside of the event where partiers dressed in neon clothing encouraged the chaos. Dave never got a chance to speak, but felt that this was all an overreaction. And what I was going to say is, listen, we're anti just as much as you. We don't believe in it. You guys are taking two jokes that were clearly satirical, blowing them out of proportion. We're on your side and that we don't like you guys are just fighting the wrong battle. You would think that Barstool was drowning in money due to the cult fan base and overwhelming brand recognition, but profit margins on these live shows were slim, and it cost tens of thousands of dollars to book talent. Dave ran the website out of his messy apartment with his small team of loyal bloggers. Ad revenue earned from the website traffic was barely enough to keep them afloat. Dave was now in his mid-30s and refused to give up on his dream. As we approached the mid-2010s, it became increasingly okay. obvious that social media sites like Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and YouTube were taking taking up more of our time, especially okay. sports fans time. They stopped printing the newspaper and fully focused on digital. The Barstool YouTube channel posted casual vlogs, highlights from their events, and even had EDP on there hosting weekly sports recaps. It was the personalities of their creators like Big Cat, KFC, Hank, and Blind Mike that kept the fandom locked in. The Bro Show was one of their more popular series. Part of my take was their comedic sports podcast which featured controversial sports opinions. The guys also hosted okay daily radio podcast show called The Rundown to stay in touch with the fan base. However, the most iconic show they created was Dave's pizza review series, One Bite. Dave would travel around Massachusetts and eventually the whole country in search of the best pizza. He would take one bite of the slice and the crust and give it a rating from 1 to 10. After just a few episodes, Dave wisely made One Bite Pizza Reviews its own YouTube channel. Four million views! Channel, which became so popular that people started recognizing Kevin Hart, the John the Cena, than the owner of Barstool Sports Media. It was now 2016, 12 years after the brand oh was established. Oh my and goodness! To pennies to make his dream a reality. How? Barstool How? How was he pinching pennies with a million? I mean, I'm guessing that's just more recent. 
months after the brand was established, it said four Kennedy years was ago, still pinching but... pennies to make his dream a reality. How? His social media reach was not massive, but the brand recognition was unlike anything. Isn't Barstool Plus, like known big now, though? I feel like I'd be seeing them on TikTok. Pulsated throughout the city. Barstool was the politically incorrect and downright filthy sports network slash men's lifestyle brand, but it had way too many moving parts than Dave knew how to handle, and he finally decided it was time to sell. Due to its 5 million monthly website viewers and immense advertising potential, Barstool was able to sell 51% of the company to the Chernin Investment Group at a 10 to 15 million dollar evaluation. The evaluation shocked Yo. everyone. Barstool was definitely big, but nobody thought it was 20 million dollars big. Portnoy says he was able to put millions in his pocket while still pouring the majority of the lump acquisition sum into the business. And that's exactly Yo. what he did. Barstool being acquired by a corporation was obviously going to change things. Slowly but surely, Dave would become closer to the traditional corporate sports network he wanted to destroy. A new CEO stepped in, Erica Nardini, to handle the company's financial direction, while Dave focused on content strategy. He knew he couldn't hold people's uh -huh. attention alone, so he scouted talent, and his mindset was simple. No. Find creative people and let them do whatever the f they want. And some hit and some don't. They started filming what it was like to work behind the scenes at a sports network. Stool Scenes was their unorganized, unscripted reality show of what it's like to work at the Barstool office. They acquired Rough and Rowdy, which is a pay-per-view boxing slash brawling event that mostly features highly untrained individuals sloppily scrapping for a cheap payday. They acquired Michael Rappaport and his infamous rant series. Chicks in the Office started as an Instagram series featuring Barstool girls talking about pop culture. Caleb Presley was doing comedic on-the-street interviews. They acquired the the Call Her Daddy podcast that was started by Alexandra Cooper and Sophia Franklin. 2018 was easily the most chaotic and experimental time for Barstool. They were okay. launching multiple series ideas every week, testing personalities to see who the fans would gravitate towards. Spin Zone, Wine Walks, Chicks Being Chicks, Gooned Up, Healthy Scratches. They would come up with an idea, slap a name on it, and throw it at the wall to see if it sticks. So and that's the, the... And honestly, that is the best thing you can do in that situation just start making things and just yeeting them at the wall because eventually one of them is going to stick and when they do you just go with it company meant that controversies that you saw what happened with one bite he did it moves. and then boom in June 2018, he should have just stuck with that though radio that Ria Kufo, a 20 year old he could have bro he could have took the one by joint did a whole spinoff and then did it with all food instead of just pizza he could have made he could have started off with pizza and then did burgers and then did hot dogs and then did like you could could you could carry that on forever for the amount of foods that we have he could have just stuck with that <laughs> camera barstool personality would not be able to put her face in front of a camera in five years because people will throw up. Disgusted by the headline, Rhea confronted Dave asking him why he would make such a rude comment. Are we going to talk about how Dave's ass is in the jackpot or because he said that I'm going to look so gross in five years that people will puke on camera? There's yeah. a chance I said that. That yeah. is horrible. Double that jackpot. Really that, that, I'm, I'm just saying you're going to age Rhea because you're in barstool world like your boyfriend but, Hank. Yeah, but in five years people will puke when they see me? That Oh, that's aggressive. That is really aggressive. First of all, apologize. I will not apologize. Yes, my job is to work on camera. That's you know what if I want I want to be working here in five years. I want to be on camera. No, I want you, to stay here. Well, so maybe you have to go behind the camera. Dave claims he was just joking, but Rhea stormed out of the office in tears, which just made him even more mad. Honestly, if you're gonna cry, then walk your ass out the door. I don't give a about that. Dave went on to say if guys and girls want to be treated the same in his company, then he will joke on them equally as hard. Barstool fans thought this was peak entertainment, but outsiders suspected that the company culture was extremely toxic. Portnoy also fired Michael mm. Rappaport for insulting the Barstool Stoolies fan base on his podcast. With Rappaport being known as a loudmouth lunatic, Dave expected him to air this out on social media. Rappaport then challenged Dave to a boxing match as well as posting this unpleasant photo. To which Dave responded by selling t-shirts with Michael's face dressed up as a clown with herpes. Rappaport couldn't take the heat and sued Dave for defamation, which went to trial. What about that shirt do you believe would haunt him for the rest of his life? He's depicted as a clown. A clown with herpes? Uh, Objection. You said that, not me.
Rappaport lost the lawsuit as there was no grounds for defamation. The workplace right. environment became such a large discussion on social media that Rafi Letzer, a staff writer at Live Science, tweeted encouraging Barstool Sports employees to send him a private message about the unionization process. Dave replied that he would fire any Barstool employee on the spot if they DM'd him, to which US Congresswoman AOC chimed in and let Dave know that his threats could land him in major legal trouble. All workers in the US have the protected freedom to organize for better conditions. Apparently, Dave's tweets led to an investigation from the National Labor Relations Board. Dang. Dave, who was known to never apologize nor take back his word, deleted his threatening tweets, but did post a Union Buster shirt for sale. The ironic part about all of this controversy is that we don't even know if Barstool employees wanted to actually form a union in the first place. All of this workplace controversy just made Dave realize how different his- Bro, and that's- Bro, these type of videos be frying my brain. Like, it's like I'm trying to understand what's happening. I get so invested and so immersed in the video. <laughs> like sometimes I forget to like make comments about it because I really don't have nothing to say. I'm trying to really just understand it and really like grasp what it's I'm watching. Small jokes that were previously treated as just guys being guys can now become national news that led to investigations and lawsuits. He needed to drift away from his common man ways and be more professional. But Barstool had more momentum than ever. They launched the One Bite app what? where fans could rank pizzerias around the world after visiting them. The app gained 175,000 downloads in its first month. Barstool claimed that each review earns about 796,000 views per episode across their YouTube, Instagram, website, app, and other platforms. As you can imagine, this is extremely great marketing for small business pizzerias around the country, who would see immediate sales increases whenever Dave would post his reviews. With all this momentum, Dave struck the biggest deal of his career. Penn Gaming announced that it has entered into an agreement to acquire a 36% stake in Barstool Sports for approximately $163 million in cash and convertible preferred stock, making the company worth about $450 million. Portnoy now only owned roughly half a million dollars, but he was filthy rich and had a yeah. multi million dollar machine backing him. To make things even better, the pandemic caused the entire world to be trapped inside, which made which is all perfect. Of Barstool's content platforms exponentially yep. increase. One bite, part of my take bff's podcast foreplay golf caller daddy sunday conversations and every single barstool original program were skyrocketing in popularity they were dominating the media landscape on all platforms yeah i'm about to say aren't they big now like i'd be seeing them on tiktok and everything like Dave also introduced a charity fund to help small businesses impacted by COVID-related lockdowns. Two of Forty-one million dollars raised. In Mamma Mia, 44th Southwest, both in New York City, were restaurants that he had previously visited as a part of his pizza review program. In total, 2020 saw Portnoy raise nearly 30 oh my million dollars for 167 small businesses in the U.S. By the end of COVID lockdowns, Portnoy had raised more than 40 million dollars for small businesses, which fundamentally changed the pizza industry. A year later, in a fundraiser called Viva La Troops, Barstool Sports raised about $200,000 for two veterans' charities. President Donald Trump even requested Dave to interview him since his son was a big fan of Barstool. Many saw Portnoy as unqualified to interview the president, and Dave agreed. He never interviewed anyone before that. He did ask Trump rather basic questions related to social issues rather than having an in-depth discussion of policy, but just the interview alone made Dave's opposers angry. Dave does not identify identify as a Republican, nor does he feel responsible for the political viewpoints of his supporters. Portnoy believes that simply sitting down with Trump fundamentally changed his career and reputation for the worse. He believes he was unfairly categorized with the right wing because of his fan base, and having the platform to inform and influence these voters bothered left-wing media outlets. Even though the pandemic was the best thing to ever happen for Barstool Sports, he was about to be in the middle of non-stop controversy for the next few years. The first Aye. controversy would fundamentally change his common man reputation that he cherishes so dearly. At the very beginning of 2021, the infamous GameStop short squeeze was in full effect. Around 140% of GameStop's publicly available shares had been shorted by hedge fund billionaires. Basically, they would make billions of dollars as long as the GameStop stock price kept dropping, which yep. led to a passionate subreddit, r slash Wall Street Bets, encouraging yep. everyone to purchase the shares in order to drive the stock price back up, which ended up making a lot of average Joe Schmo investors rich and as a bonus, made some billionaires lose money. GameStop became overvalued by 1,000%, with the stock price in the $400 range. This, all <laughs> this was the craziest thing ever. But then it sparked a revolution when stock trading app Robinhood temporarily
temporarily banned the purchasing of GameStop stock, but they did allow people to sell it. This prevented entry-level stock traders from buying, which led to panic selling, so the stock price dropped exponentially. Retail traders around the world lost their money, and the billionaire hedge funds ended up making all of theirs back. When I saw what uh, Robinhood was doing, ironically, Robinhood take from you know, take from the rich and give to the poor, even though they do the exact opposite. I was stunned. Uh, I think it's criminal. I think there has to be an investigation. I think people have to go to jail. Whether that actually happens, I don't know. But I've never been more convinced about market manipulation and yeah. the people, the hedge funds, controlling the game. He's speaking facts today. about this. Uh... I, I mean, just to wake up and say, hey, you can't trade these stocks anymore. You can only sell them. We are going to intentionally crash the market right they're intentionally forcing you to sell so it goes down so the billionaire hedge funds can make their money back because they're probably really big investors like well obviously they are but i'm saying like big investors in like robin hood and like all of these big companies so it's like it's like oh they don't want the public to you know because if everyone if everyone in the public bought a certain stock to shoot it up it would happen that's people talk about this all the time they'd be like oh so if we all just bought one stock would it shoot up yes it's just the fact that there's many reasons as to why people wouldn't but like if everyone bought a stock because you have to think about it like this for me to make money someone else has to buy and then for them to make money, someone else has to buy. So it's a never ending cycle. So it would get to the point where for you to make money, another person would have to basically like when you buy in, if I buy in at 195, that means someone have to come in and then invest as well. And the stock price raises up to 197. I now have made what you would say $2, right? It's like, oh, $2 ain't nothing. It Bro, I don't even want to talk about stocks because you got to, it depends on the shares, how much share is worth, like how much each share is worth. It, it's a lot that goes into the stock market, bro. Like, I remember when I was really into that too. Like, I'm not into it as heavily as more, but I know a lot about it already. So like, bro, stopping people and only making them sell, bear, <laughs> bearish, <laughs> it's literally going down. In these stocks and they're shorting it so they can make their money you're gonna lose a ton of money but we're gonna save the rich people in the hedge funds right Shock. crazy Portnoy went on various news outlets demanding an investigation into robin hood demanding that the robin hood ceo admit that he was trying to protect his billionaire friends despite the rigging of the market portnoy tweeted diamond, diamond hands Hades, reassuring that he would hold on to his stock no matter what you only lose when you sell they say retail investors yes. around the world respected dave's honor he was their leader using his platform to demand change from the obviously corrupt market but just three short days later dave tweeted that he sold his his shares in GameStop at a whopping $700,000 loss. The loss was okay for Portnoy, who was worth a cool $100 million, but all the average common men that saw Portnoy as one of them realized he is just another multi-millionaire who is not willing to risk an insanely small percentage of his overabundance of wealth. Paper Hands Portnoy became his new nickname, and for the first time, his own fan base started second-guessing their support for the press. But this was just the beginning. Dave's 2021 was about to get much worse. In November of 2021, yeah. Business Insider published an article claiming that the Barstool founder had subjected numerous young women to violent, humiliating sex acts. One female mentioned in the piece went by the name of Madison, who was a 20-year-old college student at the time. Madison commented on one of Portnoy's Instagram posts, then he DM'd her. The discussion transitioned to Snapchat and text messaging, where the focus promptly shifted to the subject of sex. Madison claimed that Portnoy shared explicit videos of women he had been intimate with, and in the messages examined by Insider, persistently urged to disclose her own sexual fantasies. I mean, actually, this one's kind of common, wrote Madison, like a fantasy, where I don't have any control of what's going on. You and I are going to get along so well, Portnoy responded. The Barstool founder bought her a ticket. You and I are going to Why do some women have this type of fantasy? This is very weird. I find this very odd. I don't think it's a 
great fantasy i think it's a just you just like the idea of being helpless like you can't do anything i don't think those are the same things that's kind of and something about that is just disgusting it's like you what like there's actual women on the earth who have been through this type of thing and wouldn't want to experience that ever or ever again or at all or ever be in those type of situations so to kind of fantasize it feels like disrespectful and weird in my opinion it's like uh -uh. to get along so well port yeah there. and he's yeah he got Jordan. it the Barstool founder bought her a ticket to his home in Nantucket. According to Madison, the trip was a traumatic experience, with Portnoy pulling out his phone and filming her, without her permission, as she performed oral on him. The article continues to go into great detail about how rough and aggressive Dave was. At one point, the young woman recalled crying and shouting, too much, too much, it hurts. Immediately when the article was posted, Dave emailed Business Insider, inviting their writers onto the Dave Portnoy podcast to talk about the situation. They replied that they decline and are are going to let the story speak for itself. So he responded to Madison's story with this video. At no point, she came, she flew, we did have pizza, hung out, hooked up, at no point during it, at no point, was it not 100% consensual? At no point did she ask me to stop. At no point did either of us think something unseemly happened. There was no weirdness after. It was totally fine, normal interaction. Sexual, 100%. I don't even know how to feel about this, but I feel like look, part of me wants to feel like he's not lying. But at the same time, because I don't want to just go into it being like, oh, the women's always right. Because you have, I feel like you have to value both sides, but. Like. I don't know, bro, like I feel like. <laughs> I feel like he I don't think he's lying because mm, she said that was her fantasy. So if that's what you wanted, I don't, that's just nasty. 100% consensual. My lawyer's like, don't, don't, you know, make these blanket statements. I'm telling you now, her version of events is not true on our hookup. Just not true. Neither of us were like, oh, you shouldn't be doing it. It, it was 100 million percent consensual. What's going on in her brain? I have no idea. Her actions outward all 100% normal. Wasn't alarmed, never thought about it. Now, after we hooked up, we were hanging out more and it just became one of those situations where we disagree basically on everything from, you know, is it raining or sunny out? Is it's just oil and vinegar. Two people who did not get along, did not see the world the same way. Dave was able to provide a screen recording of the girl's Instagram who posted three photos at the time of this encounter. First, they can be seen playing Scrabble. She says, me beating Dave Portnoy in Scrabble. Then the next image, which Dave says is blurred because he doesn't want people to send hate her way with a caption that read, Portnoy was a dick and lame and grumpy. I think grumpy is the exact line they use in the Business Insider that how she described me. He gets a two of 10 from me. If he ever truly pisses me off, I have lots of content to expose him with. I'm gonna stick with athletes. Uh, she unleashed everything she had on me, okay? So I guess it's sex and, but the story is made up. There is 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0. Yeah, see, I don't here. believe her. But, this is after we had sex. Is there any talk about assault? Any of the things she's saying? Right? Yeah, because she would have put it up there. Donald Trump with the caption, not my proudest bang. He believes Business Insider wrote their story as if he was guilty of a crime, even though. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he did that one, bro. I think it was really on some some hating right there. Some evilness. Because like she would have put that she would have. Bro, she and I know like some like when girls go through like stuff like that, like women usually they hold it in for a very long time because they don't know what to do or they're scared or whatever. This doesn't seem like one of those situations, bro. It looks like she just regretted her decision and did it because he was just famous and then afterwards regretted it and then tried to get something out of it. Right. They never accused him. The Insider article does not accuse him of since they could be sued. Instead, they used a quote from the girl saying it, quote, felt like rape. The article highlighted another story of a 19-year-old named Allison who had a rough sexual experience with Dave. We went upstairs and he was really aggressive and I didn't know what to do. And we had sex and that was it. He kicked me out. He kept spitting in my mouth, which was really gross, Allison said. I was kind of scared. I didn't want to disappoint him. When her friends picked Allison up, they claimed that she couldn't even talk because she was in shock. However, Insider also wrote, 
Allison does not describe what happened to her as sexual assault, but said she was still deeply disturbed by the experience, but then went on to say that three days later she was hospitalized due to ending thoughts. Dave and many others pointed out that Business Insider wrote this article as if he did assault these women when both of them say that everything was consensual. Dave then did a live stream on his YouTube channel where he spent one hour releasing evidence that he did not assault Allison and Madison, including the Instagram DM conversation between him and Allison. Allison was in Nantucket where Dave lived and asked him to hang out multiple times, to which he denied. Then on a different day she said, can we bang? To which he replied, yes, and reassured her that if she didn't want to do anything, they wouldn't. After the hookup, Dave shows the two texting back and forth. Because Allison was hospitalized due to ending thoughts, her mother filed a police report. The police report did not prompt an investigation because again, no crime was technically reported. In the report, the mother, who wanted her name to be anonymous, said that Dave Portnoy only hangs out with 18-year-old girls and asks them if they are willing to have intercourse with him. Then says that her 19-year-old daughter went to David's house and something happened, now she was in the hospital. The mother stated that her daughter stated that she has no memory of going to David Portnoy's house. The mother wouldn't give the daughter's name or tell the officer what happened. All she said that she wants to give us a heads up on David Portnoy's behaviors because she doesn't want this to happen to other young girls. Business Insider admits that they read this police report before they published their article. Girls. Doesn't want this to happen to other young girls on the island. On the island? Epstein? Island? On the island? What are you talking about? Uh, maybe that girl wasn't lying. Business Insider admits that I they wasn't. read this police report before they published their article, but Portnoy and others see this police report as discernible proof that no crime Bro, was no you were. nor was no you weren't. reported or accused, with the key words being something happened and the daughter has no memory. Additionally, Business Insider contacted Barstool advertisers to see if they were aware of the story they had posted about Dave and if there has been any discussions regarding those partnerships and ad placements. Dave believes he provided enough evidence to prove that this was nothing more than a hit piece. Allegations with no backing that serve no purpose other than to assassinate his character. He then sued them for defamation, but a federal judge determined he didn't have enough evidence necessary to prove defamation claims. Detractors say that his text messages and even the police report don't prove his innocence, and victims are often too shocked and scared to perfectly report these types of crimes. Following the controversy, Barstool Sports launched a new philanthropy arm called Barstool difference pegged to its existing Barstool Fund. Specifically, the initiative has four parts. The first, titled Work Like a Girl, involves helping female-run businesses. The second, for veterans. Okay. The third, to support youth service. The fourth, to help people get clean from alcohol and drugs. These controversies Dang. have seemingly had no impact on the Barstool business. In fact, he bought the entire company back for $1. In February of 2023, Penn Gaming acquired 100% of Barstool Sports for $388 million. Since Penn made their first acquisition in 2020, they grew Barstool's audience 194% and recorded total podcast downloads of 1.6 billion. They delivered over 875,000 videos across social media totaling over 128 oh my million God. and increased ad sales by 160%. But just a few months after Penn acquired the company, they sold it all back to Dave for $1. Because of Dave's extremely controversial past, Penn could not operate in the heavily regulated gambling industry. When they needed licenses to operate in certain states, they would be denied. Barstool was even banned from doing their college game day show because they were accused of promoting gambling to kids. Penn could not make necessary major business deals because of their ownership of Barstool and powerful people's hatred towards Dave. So Penn uh... sold the company back to Dave and immediately secured a major partnership with ESPN, rebranding to ESPN Bet. Dave Portnoy is officially oh, wow. 100% owner of Barstool Sports today. I am never going to sell Barstool Sports ever. I'll hold it till I die. But the Wall Street Bet's community doesn't believe he's going to hold. Now he is facing the challenges of being the sole decision-making factor on hundreds of employees and managing millions of dollars and billions of views. Dave has proclaimed himself as uncancelable. He claims he has been a victim of baseless media attacks. Nah, he doesn't believe he has done I, anything wrong. I cannot imagine having to sit here and handle billions of views and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on my own. That's crazy. I couldn't, bro. That's a different level of 
Nah, bro. All right. Last video of the stream is titled Dad Shop. <laughs> Like Diana, pretty princess, hold a fan of thousand three, don't check a banner. Jeans make her ass look fatter. We won't catch him outside, he don't got no money.